Feminism didn't free women from the oppression they thought they were under. It freed men from the oppression they didn't know they were under. And the crazy part about this is that women are damn well aware. They are approaching the wall, or even have crashed right through it already. Then keep telling young women how great the life of a carousel rider is, and how amazing it is to be single with 40 plus. And of course, this is exactly the fairy tale of a life free of consequences those young women want to hear. Thus, the cycle starts anew. Truth is that the intimacy revolution dismantled women's side of the social contract. It left men's side intact and added to it with government-sponsored intimidation of courts, laws, and police. What incentive is there for men to get married? The reality is that many of us are concerned about the divorce laws in a country where two out of three marriages fail. She gets your children, child support, alimony, and the house. And if the marriage was 10 years, she gets half your retirement. There is a great deal to lose, and we haven't even talked about emotions. The risk outweighs the rewards by millions of miles. Many of these women have mental health issues, are extremely obese, have tattoos all over their bodies, weird colorful hairstyles, have bad attitudes and personalities, have unrealistic high standards, are mothers without their husbands, have substances abuse problems, are alcoholics, sleep around with way too many partners, have bad health habits, have a weird obsession with their dogs or cats, live very dirty and messy in their homes, are extremely focused on their corporate careers, and many of them are carrying STDs. Feminism has lied to them all right, as leaving locking a man down till her late twenties is practically too late, as 90% of her ovarian eggs are dead by then. Her effort to conceive is quadrupled and risks of fetal development and deformities increase exponentially. Instead of feminism, the basic biology they need to relearn is we men love them for these things. Their youth, beauty, virginity, fertility, maternity, agreeability, workability, lovability, loyalty, and company. This dictates that they need to use that window of opportunity when they're young. A man, on the other hand, isn't affected in the same way by age. In fact, it's practically reversed. He gains his SMV as he ages to peak between 40 and even into his 50s. Why? Because females are frail and dependent, especially so when nursing, and practically incapacitated when pregnant, so not only want or need, they require a man's provision, protection, and security. He's loved for his social status his resources, and his financial net worth by her, its basic biology and common sense. A young man has not acquired those yet, but an older man has, especially if he's stacked his cash and built his wealth properly. No wonder sugar babies and sugar daddies are on the rise these days. When are women going to wake up and stop chasing careers and start applying their own basic biology? The animal kingdom figured it out and our ancestors figured it out. Start following suit ladies, serve a loving husband for life, and had a harmonious family, or suffer the consequences of slaving away for some boss till the day you die alone, except perhaps with your cats for company. As a culture, we have apparently made progress, but there are still standards that apply only to men and not to women. Unrealistic and downright unpleasant expectations. While some modern women might be inclined to place the blame on the patriarchy, the majority of them continue this never-ending cycle of expecting more from the other gender. It wouldn't be so uneven if women assumed equal responsibilities, which will never happen to be honest. However, the majority of women currently face the difficulty of having too many options, rather than being the ones who need to look for possibilities. Women receive a lot of attention simply for sharing a few hot photos on Instagram while regular men receive zero attention, and are essentially invisible. There has been a lot of effort put into criticizing the unfair standards that are applied to women, but not as much to men. It's as if men just don't matter to society anymore. When things go tough, I see people justifying the logical standards for men. We are deliberately upholding the same chauvinistic norms for males while feigning an interest in this utopian imaginary egalitarian and prosperous future. It appears that there are still these widely accepted and romanticized ideals 
for what a handsome man should be. In other words, a guy is devoid of emotions, flaws, and blunders. He is doing well financially. He is tall, attractive, and in excellent physical condition. He works with his hands in addition to having a degree. He is not just confident, as some claim, but also socially dominant. You see, it is unhealthy and impractical to have such expectations. But today's women just provide their beauty in exchange for what they desire, which is literally every good quality possible in a man. But this stereotype continues to be widely held. Living in the most well-liked music videos, TV episodes, novels, movies, and fan fiction establishes the benchmark for getting a response in online dating, etc. All of us are somewhat aware that most men are not this ideal. We are aware that our fathers weren't. Brothers are not either. We realize that's not how our sons behave. Why then have men stopped dating? I believe the reason for this is largely down to the fact that being held to a standard to which you just cannot fairly expect to live up is extremely demeaning. Simply to get your foot in the door and maybe show someone that even if you're not 6'3", making six figures a year with washboard abs, a business degree, enjoy an active but social media safe social relationships, enjoy no personal troubles, and have no bad qualities, even though you're not that guy you could be a worthy human. Despite all of this valid justification, women still refuse to accept anything that falls short of that standard. Thus, it is simple to see why males feel frustrated. I believe that many young guys initially put themselves in vulnerable situations more than once and get too dehumanized by the pressure to succeed. You can only damage yourself from the inside so many times before you conclude it's eroding your sense of value especially when the message seems to be that repeatedly. Why are men subjected to a different thought process regarding dating? Why does society think it's okay for women to enjoy a single life, but men have to shoulder the burden of those who do want to get married? First, I think it's because men have always had the role of being providers for women throughout history. They were the hunters and gatherers. They were the protectors, and they were the decision makers for a lot of people including large groups. It's only when society sort of developed into what it is today that we have women who are also the decision makers of groups and even companies. They're heading households, leading governments, and basically have the same level of independence that men have, maybe even more. So, I think it's hard to let go of preconceived notions that have been around for ages, and one such notion is that men need to provide for women and for other people as well because that's what makes a man. Secondly, since society has changed so much, and since the roles of women have changed so much, we're still in that space and time, like if you zoom out to see a timeline of things. We're now in the celebratory phase where women are celebrated for choosing to not have families and children, because it means that a woman is fighting those same preconceived notions today to change her destiny. I'm sure if we fast forward a hundred years, people will say the same thing to women it's extremely selfish of them to not have children when it is in fact women who can naturally and biologically have children. Men don't have such biological resources at their disposal, so they can't be the ones giving birth. Conventional dating as we previously knew is no longer an option, and I seriously doubt that it ever will be for the great majority of people. Men and women would previously meet in public places to spend time and money, in exchange for companionship and romance. They would use the standard method of hooking up, where the man would have to invest all of his resources, including money, time, energy, and complete attention, in order to satisfy the woman's need for validation, while the woman would prefer to be showered with gifts and taken on expensive dates before having to appease the man. Men have realized that it really isn't worth their time, effort, energy, and finances to date, and commit to women who are only influenced by extreme forms of feminism, willing to ignore their feminine sides and instead waste away their lives trying to be independent, only to realize how they've wasted their time doing that in the first place. And so, this is the raw truth of why men are avoiding dating and going their own way. Thanks for watching The Circle of Kings. As always, we're looking forward to your support. So please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, 
and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything all kings like yourself need to know.